Chapter 2.5, Part 5. Um, so we're looking at Corbusier and the height of modernism and the international style. Now, the international style, we don't really have like the very best examples in this book, but it, they're usually boxy glass um, skyscrapers, and we've all seen those. So <clears throat> hopefully you guys have a sense of what those look like in a downtown area. They're in every city now, hence the term international style. It was done all over the world. So Le Corbusier, um, he's active in France and Switzerland, and he's making these boxy structures. If you notice all this open area, which we never really had before in architecture because um, we would have to have bulkier columns, you can sort of see how the steel is operating in this way. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright operating a little bit different. He's a, a very individualistic um, uh, architect. Uh, a lot of his buildings have severe flaws. You, you can go and tour a, a number of them in Los Angeles. This one is in Bear Run, Pennsylvania, and this is also a tourist destination. They're not all that livable, is from what I what I have understood, and there's the ceilings are short because he was a short person and he was an egomaniac. But anyway, they're quite gorgeous, really interesting. He experiments with concrete, experiments with a lot of materials, but in this particular building and many of his other buildings, he's focusing on um, the surroundings and imitating or uh, incorporating those uh, elements. So if you look at this shape and uh, coloration of the falling water, which is the waterfall here, he is trying to imitate that with his architecture. Remember I said we were going to come back to the cantilever? Well, here it is. You can't really see it all that well, but this is a big open area here, so it's cantilevered. There are steel beams going way back in here in order to let that suspend by itself. Um, it can happen. It's structurally sound, but it's not ideal um, forever. It's not a very... How do you want to say, uh, thinking about permanence, it's not thinking about, you know, living forever, but he really wanted his bu his buildings, like, to incorporate uh, the natural setting, so this is to look like this. These stones were quarried from a quarry nearby, and some of the coloration, like the fall leaves, are echoed here, but I don't know that that was so much of that thinking, but definitely with the stone and these shapes here. So Le Corbusier comes up with the machine for living, and he's using industrial materials, strong ge geometry, boxy, like I said, and unadorned. And Frank Lloyd Wright believes in his organic relationship between the site and the building. Reinforced concrete. I told you we get back to concrete. After 2,000 years, we start to see more buildings built of it. I really don't know of any 19th century examples of concrete. I'm sure they exist, but I don't know about them. Um, but use for sidewalks, that happened 